Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Latham, and welcome to my stream room. What's going on guys? I am so incredibly excited to finally be able to share with you my latest stream room. I have been personally streaming for about two years now and this is my fourth stream room that I have been streaming in and I gotta say this is my most favorite so far. I'm incredibly happy with the way that it turned out. Because I have streamed in so many different rooms, I've learned a couple of different tips and tricks all along the way that I'm incredibly excited to share with you guys today as we go through this tour. But I do want to preface that you do not need all of this nice gear. Learn to be resourceful. There's so many ways that you can kind of mimic a lot of these things. And I do want to say all of the gear that I will be showing off today, I will have linked down in the description below, even if I don't specifically call it out in what I'm showing you guys. And with that, let's start taking a look. So for the first area of my stream room, I have an entertainment area. The main piece is this 55 inch Samsung TV with some LifeX light strips behind it. I love my LifeX lights. They're super, super bright and you can do really cool things with them. Love the way it looks behind the TV. For those of you who have been following me for a little while now, know that I used to DJ all throughout college and I now have some DJ players, which I kind of keep this to myself for my own fun. I might eventually DJ on stream one of these days, but for now, I'm keeping this as my own hobby. These are Denon players and mixer. Absolutely love them. The industry standard is Pioneer, but I like these Denons. They're a lot cheaper and they're actually better in my opinion. Super, super happy with these. Love these things. And now moving on down, we have an Ikea entertainment center and I ended up putting in my own custom LED lights that I put on each shelf to kind of illuminate and it looks really cool on stream. And inside of those, I keep my Nintendo Switch, my Xbox, as well as some headphones and a charging station for all of my camera's batteries. So that wraps up this side of the room. Now let's move on to the next part. So this is the more chill area of my stream room. I have a smaller couch that I bought off of Amazon that we ended up putting in here. It wasn't too expensive or anything, so it's not the most comfortable couch in the world, but it definitely is good enough to be able to hang out on here for a couple of hours at a time. Bronte uses it more than I do. When I am gaming, she likes to come in here, lay down, put Animal Crossing up on the big screen and just kind of hang out for a couple of hours. So honestly, it's more for other people when they want to come over and hang out than it is for me. But to make it a little more aesthetic for my streams, I did end up putting some LED lights underneath the couch as well. They're the same LED strips that I have in the entertainment center. So on my streams, I have a little bit of extra pop in the background. But in addition to the light strips in my streams, you will notice that the main source of light for my streams are actually coming from this lamp up here, which I have two different LifeX bulbs. Now I highly recommend LifeX bulbs because they put out a lot of color and they're extremely bright. And I did a bunch of research and while Philips Hue may be like the go-to for a lot of people, the LifeX are actually a bit brighter and I think it looks a little better on stream. So that's why I went with those. All right, and now this is unique to my room specifically, but I have extremely tall ceilings. So I have this weird area above this closet that I needed to do something. It kind of seemed dark in here without anything. So what I ended up doing was buying a third LED strip and putting it up there to illuminate the brand colors that I use a little more in the room, just to add a little more filling of light while I'm streaming. And it ends up looking a little better on my stream if I didn't have it, so I'm extremely happy that I purchased that. And also, I do have some surround sound speakers up there, so when I am watching something like a stream up on my TV, it ends up sounding really, really cool. And now for the most important part of the whole room is the stream setup, obviously. Now, this setup is super awesome for me because it all starts with the IKEA desk that I built myself. Basically, if you guys are ever on Reddit and you see the majority of people's fancy setups, most people end up just building their own desk. It's really cheap and it's an easy way to go. But this basically is a long tabletop from Ikea and I really like that it's extra long because if I need Bronte to come over and do some work with me, like on some editing, 
she can pull up and she has her own area off to the side and that is why I keep most of my setup on one side. Now to start things off, I have my gaming PC here, which is also my stream PC. I only use a one PC setup. I think it is too much of a hassle and not worth all the money to have a second PC, especially with all the latest updates to OBS and these RTX cards are amazing. It just makes more sense now to stream off of your GPU using an RTX card. I definitely think it is the way to go. And for my PC setup, I am rocking an i7 8700K for my CPU and an RTX 2070 for my GPU with 32 gigs of RAM and I have all Corsair cooling and it is super quiet for streaming. I absolutely love this PC. And now to go with that, my PC is powering two 27 inch 1440p displays. I have both of these monitors clocked at 150 hertz so that way my frame timing is a little better for OBS because my OBS stream is at 60 frames per second. So I don't know if that's actually real science or not. But I think it makes sense in my head so that is why I have it clocked at 150 hertz for both of them. For my main monitor, it is a nice ASUS IPS panel. It looks absolutely amazing. The colors really pop on it. And then for the second monitor, I have a curved panel off to the left. And this is a very cheap panel that I got off of Amazon. I believe the company is called Biotech. It doesn't look the best, but it is 1440p and I can fit a lot more on the screen. And I mostly use it just to have OBS and I chat up while I'm streaming. So I don't really care that it's not that high quality. It gets the job done. And now moving on to all of the peripherals and accessories underneath. First things first is you will notice I have my Go XLR, which I reviewed a while back. If you haven't seen that, go check out that video. I highly recommend this thing. I cannot imagine streaming without this thing anymore. I absolutely love this thing. From there, I have some speakers. I used to have these giant KRK, those big yellow speakers that you see a lot of music producers with, but they were just so incredibly big and it ate up so much room and it just didn't look nice. It was unnecessary for my stream setup. So I downsized to the smaller Kanto YU2 speakers. They sound absolutely great. And now moving on, we have the stream deck. Every streamer needs a stream deck. I literally don't know how anyone could survive without one anymore please pick up a stream deck. And then next to my stream deck, I keep my Elite controller. I grew up being an Xbox kid, so I like the Xbox controllers over the PlayStation ones. And I still play a lot of Rocket League in my own free time, so I keep my Elite controller here and I love using the paddles on the back. Highly recommend picking up any sort of controller that has paddles on the back if you do use a controller. And now moving on, we have my headset which is the SteelSeries Arctic Pro. Love these, they're super lightweight, they sound phenomenal, and I have these paired with their DAC. And now moving on from that, we have my microphone. Now this is the Rode Procaster microphone. Highly, highly recommend this microphone. This kind of goes head to head with the Shure SM7B, and both of those microphones give you a nice, kind of broadcasty, warm sound that everyone's looking for. And what's nice about dynamic mics is that you need to be really close to it in order to activate it and sound good. So what's great about that is it rejects background noise, especially for things like a keyboard. And the reason that I went with this microphone over the Shure SM7B is that this microphone is actually about half the cost and it rejects noise even better than the Shure SM7B. And they sound almost the same anyway. So I highly recommend this microphone. And then for the boom arm that is holding the microphone, I have a knockoff one of the Rode boom arm. Don't get this thing, this thing was awful. This was about half the cost of the Rode boom arm. They're supposed to be similar, but this thing just it doesn't move around nearly as well. There's a reason why everyone ends up spending the $100 to get the Rode version. It's way smoother if you watch anyone that has one. You can see they can just easily move their microphone around versus this, I really have to kind of wiggle it around. It's a huge pain. Now moving on are my latest accessories that I have picked up. I recently acquired a new keyboard and mouse. And this keyboard is the Ducky 1-2 Mini in white. And I picked up some custom keycaps that let the LEDs shine through even more. Love the way that this thing looks. And I actually really like the feel of it. Now the reason I went ahead and picked this keyboard up is for two reasons. These have red silent switches, so it's less clacky when I am streaming and so you don't hear as much keyboard noise. And it is also a 60% keyboard, meaning it doesn't have arrow keys and it doesn't have a numpad 
My last keyboard had all of that. It was huge and massive. I was always hitting the side of it with my mouse. It was not a good time. So for streamers, highly recommend getting a small compact keyboard. And now moving on to the mouse, I recently picked this thing up. This is the Model O minus. It is extremely light. It feels like air. It almost might as well be a wireless mouse. It is absolutely amazing. Love it. And now underneath all of that is a giant mouse pad. For gamers, please pick up a giant mouse pad. I went so long without having a big mouse pad. I thought it was unnecessary, but after picking one up, I can't live without this thing. This is the Steel Series RGB extra large mouse pad. The feel of it is absolutely amazing. I normally in the past got those $5 cheap mouse pads. And after upgrading to this, I understand why you should drop money on a nice mouse pad. And now for the chair that I love, I cannot live without this thing anymore. This is the Secret Lab Omega chair. Love, love this thing. Like I can't emphasize this enough. This is one of my favorite purchases that I have made in the last couple of years. I highly recommend this chair to anyone that I talk to. As a streamer and a gamer, it is so important to have a good ergonomic chair that will actually support you for hours on end. Please invest in a good chair. Now underneath my desk is my favorite pro tip of them all. I don't know about you guys, but I get really hot when I'm streaming and I always want some sort of fan on me, but you don't want the fan noise going right into your microphone. So what do you kind of do? And after having multiple stream rooms that are very hot, I discovered one of the best things you can do is to get a really quiet fan and mount it under your desk. Now, so what I ended up doing is just finding a little section in this fan and I got a hook, hooked it in up in my desk and hooked the fan right onto it and then just have a power button there that turns it on and off. So when I'm in the middle of a stream, I can just quickly toggle that on and you won't be able to hear anything because my mic is on the other side of the desk. Another tip is for cable management, if you don't like to organize your cables like me and it's just a huge pain, get a huge cage that will just house everything and put your power strip in this cage right here and then just throw all your cables into it. It is so convenient and it is one of the easiest ways you can do cable management and it may not look the best looking at it right here underneath, but when you are up top, you don't see a thing and it is super convenient. And now behind my monitors, you'll notice that I actually have some sound panels. These help with some initial reflections of when you're streaming and you're just yelling into your mic. This will kind of absorb some of those bounce back reflections and you won't get weird echoes into your microphone. Off to the side is my stream camera, which I have done a review on this. It is the Sony A5100, an absolute amazing camera for streaming. I personally think it's the best camera for streaming given the price of it. And you will notice that I have it on a mount that goes up to this shelf. So after looking on Reddit at so many awesome setups, one common theme that I saw that I really liked was when people had shelves above their setup so you can put cool things up on there. I wanted to do it just for looks, but then I started to realize that it is actually really good for lighting as well. And you'll notice here that I have two LED panels on the shelf pointed down with barn doors so they can direct the light even better. And the reason that this is so important was something that I struggled with for so many years and just never really understood. I always wanted to have cool colored lights in the background of my streams, but whenever I put on these key lights, it would just wash out behind me and it would just be a plain colorless background and it bothered me so much that I couldn't have cool lights but good lighting at the same time. The solution, have lights that are a bit higher up, angle down at you, put some barn doors on them to control the light even more and you will direct the light solely on you. This is one of my favorite pro tips for you guys. Your streams will look so much better in the background because of it. And then to finish off the shelf, I have a BB-8 because I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, love Star Wars, and my favorite Xbox controller ever is the Sea of Thieves one. It looks so cool and it reminds me of my M64 growing up. For those of you that know, you know, the purple controller that was see-through a bit, amazing controller. So that is my stream room tour. Again, you guys do not need to go out and rush and buy all this fancy stuff for your setup. Be resourceful, use whatever you have. But if you are curious and want to purchase the exact same things that I do have, I have the links for everything posted in the description below. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment down below and I will respond to as many comments as possible. And if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos related to streaming tech and tips. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.